Once upon a most early time, there was a Neolithic man. He was not a Jute, or an Angle, or even a Dravidian, which he might well have been. He lived in a cave, and he wore very few clothes, and he couldn't read, and he couldn't write, and he didn't want to. And except when he was hungry, he was quite happy. His name was Tegumai Bopsulai, but we will call him Tegumai for short. He lived with a woman whose name was Teshumai Tewindro, but we will call her Teshumai for short. And her little girl daughter's name was Tafimai Metalumai, but we'll call her Taffy. And they were all three very happy. As soon as Taffy could run about, she went everywhere with Tegumai. Sometimes they wouldn't come home to the cave till they were hungry. Then Teshumai would say, Where in the world have you two been to get so shocking dirty? One day, Tegumai Bopsulai went down through the beaver swamp to the Wagai River to spear carp fish for dinner. Taffy went too. Tegumai's spear was made of wood with shark's teeth at the end. But before it caught any fish at all, he accidentally broke it clean across by jabbing it down too hard on the bottom of the river. They were miles and miles from home, and Tegumai had forgotten to bring any extra spears. Here's a pretty kettle of fish, said Tegumai. It will take me half the day to mend this. There's your big black spear at home, said Taffy. Let me run back to the cave and ask Mummy to give it to me. <laughs> it's too far for your little fat legs, said Tegumai. Besides, you might fall into the beaver swamp and look around. We must make the best of a bad job. So he sat down and took out a little leather mending bag full of reindeer sinews, strips of leather, and lumps of beeswax, and he began to mend the spear. Taffy sat down too, with her toes in the water and her chin in her hands, and thought very hard. Then she said, I say, Dad, it's an awful nuisance that you and I don't know how to write, isn't it? If we did, we could send a message for the new spear. Now you mention it, said Tegumai. That would be a convenience. Just then, a stranger came along the river. He belonged to a far-off tribe called the Tewaras, and he didn't understand a word of Tegumai's language. So he stood on the bank and smiled at Taffy. Come here, said Taffy. Do you know where my mother lives? But being a Tewaran, the stranger just said, Silly, said Taffy, and she stamped her foot. Don't bother him, said Tegumai. I'm not, said Taffy. I only want him to do what I want him to do, but he doesn't understand. Then don't bother me, said Tegumai, and he went on mending his spear. This is a wonderful child, thought the Tawaran. She stamps her foot and makes faces at me. She must be the daughter of the noble chief, who is so great he doesn't take any notice of me. So he smiled more politely than ever. Now, said Taffy, I want you to go to my mother, because your legs are longer than mine, and you won't fall into the beaver swamp, and ask for Dad's other spear, the one with the black hand. I don't understand a word this very wonderful child says. So he twisted a piece of bark from a birch tree and gave it to Taffy. He did this to show that his heart was as white as the bark, and he meant no harm. But Taffy didn't understand. Oh, I see, she said. You want my mother's living address. Of course, I can't write, but I can draw pictures, if I've anything sharp to scratch with. And she pulled at the shark's tooth hanging round the baron's neck. I was always told that my shark's tooth was magic and that if anybody touched it without my permission they would immediately swell up or burst. 
But as Taffy didn't swell up or burst, and Tegumide didn't seem to be afraid that she would swell up or burst, the Tuaran thought he had better give her the shark's tooth. And he used it to draw her picture. First, I'll draw Dad fishing with his spear or rope. Now, I'll draw the black-handled spear. It looks as if it's sticking in Dad's back, and that's because the shark's tooth slipped. And this is me explaining to you. My hair doesn't really stand up like that, but it's easier to draw that way. And this is you. I put the spear Dad wants in your hand. The Tiwaran hurried away with the picture and ran for miles till, quite by accident, he found Tashumai Kawindro at the door of the cave. She was talking to some other Neolithic ladies. The Tiwaran recognized Teshumai because she looked very much like Taffy. He smiled politely and handed Teshumai the birch bark. As soon as she saw the picture, she screamed. The other Neolithic ladies at once knocked him down and sat on him. He has stuck my tail, my all full of spears, and frightened poor Taffy so that her hair stands on end, cried Teshumai. Then he brings me a horrid picture of how it was done. Look. She showed the picture to the Neolithic ladies sitting patiently on the Tewaran. Most shocking, they said, and they filled the Tewaran's hair with mud. Then they led him down to the Wagai River so that he might show them where he had hidden poor Taffy. They found Taffy making daisy chains. What are you doing to my nice stranger man? He came with a horrible picture, showing my Tegumai full of spears and you with your hair standing up with fright, said Tashumai. I wanted the stranger man to fetch Dad's spear, so I drawed it, said Taffy. You've hit upon a great invention. I didn't intend to. Never mind. Someday people will call it writing. Then he asked the Tiwaran if he would like to join their tribe, because he was a gentleman and didn't make a fuss about the mud the Neolithic ladies had put into his head.